Josh, what's going on, man? Hi, guys. How are you? Oh, my God. No time. No time. Yeah. I got, I got some headphones to put on here. Jump right in. You were... Uh, uh, so, Unsane is one of these uh, movies that they shot. We had... Uh, uh, what's his name? Why am I blanking on his name right now? J.J. Miller? No, Jay no, no. Farrow. No, no, no. We had a, uh, he's uh, a friend. Uh, Sean. Uh, 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 Stormy Daniels. Uh, <laughs> That's uh, it yeah. Was. Stormy Daniels. Jerry Lawler. Jim Baker? Jerry the Lewis. manager of Chili's. <laughs> yeah, so in Encino. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That guy's I wish amazing. I knew that guy. <laughs> that's also my favorite Chili's. Yeah! yeah mine no, too. Oh my God, that See? Chili's rules. I try to tell you, Florentine makes fun of me because when I go to LA, I end up, I've, I've eaten, like, I go to LA like two or three times a year. I shouldn't have gone to a Chili's, the same Chili's in LA multiple times but i've probably been to that one like half a dozen times it's fantastic if you like that one you should also check out the one in glendale <laughs> because that chilies is out of control a lot of people say if i like that one i should try literally all chilies everywhere because uh, they're all exactly the same yes i, I was just say if you like that one you hang yourself yeah <laughs> i love it all, also fair i love it um but well, can, can we talk about getting cracker barrels to manhattan Cracker Barrel's another great restaurant. I don't, I'll eat at on a road, but it's like, uh, You don't yeah, want it in I'm New York? A... It wouldn't make you happy? No, I, I just, just I, oh. I, they're a necessity food. I don't eat it because I like no, it. It's shitty. No, that's not true. You, it's, in a, it, 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 it's a roadside indulgence. And it's very affordable. I would take a Waffle House over to Cracker Barrel. Really? Yeah. I love Cracker Barrel, but Cracker House. Barrel's menu is, it just goes on forever. I don't, I don't need a big menu. I, I know what I'm eating. I'm not eating what, 75 Come. things on there. <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends what, I don't need that in the morning. <laughs> I do that at night after a few drinks. I love Cracker Barrel because they're very unapologetic about what they are. Last time I went to a Cracker Barrel, I was with my wife and she like, of course you know, you it was your wedding. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was our reception. It was your honeymoon. There was one in the Poconos. It was. Yeah, that's right. Um, but she had ordered, like, I don't know, one of her, probably a side of broccoli or something. And uh, they bring out our food, and she goes, uh, Don't worry. Your broccoli will be out in just a second. We're just nuking it right now. <laughs> it's like, that's the waitress amazing. is just like talking about microwaving. Food. Yeah, we're microwaving your broccoli. And it's also, also, when they put uh, bacon bacon in your uh, in your broccoli, and you're like, I, 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 well, I'm a vegetarian. And they're like, yeah, it's got vegetables in it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you don't even have to specifically mm. ask for bacon. It's just a given. Like, of course, if you get broccoli, there's going to be bacon in it. <laughs> like, why what what kind of broccoli do you eat, man? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, no, I, I don't fuck with those unless I have to. All right, fair enough. You look skinny. Thank you. Yeah. I feel like I'm fatter than normal. I have little body image issues. What, do you, um, do you have body dysmorphia? Pilates? No, just gym. Just well, nothing. Do, what, do you, what do you do at the gym? What do you listen to? Nothing. The trainer. I don't have oh. any, I know music on, unless I'm alone, then I'll put on my <laughs> dumb iPod, but no, I, I always, I'm that's a really funny somebody. response. What? What do you listen to? The trainer. The tra well, I mean, that's <laughs> all, <laughs> I, I do what that man all, says. All, all day long. Yeah. I have my no, headphones. No music. No music. <laughs> <laughs> what about when you work out on the road? Then I'll put on music, just, you know. What do you listen to? It's Sabbath or uh, Sean Paul. I mix <laughs> no. it up. Between Sean Paul, Sabbath, sure. or Tori Amos. Yeah. <laughs> Jim like is it. a big Sean Paul fan. I am. I love Sean Paul, but I, I also him. love Sabbath. Like, he's literally, he's on, and it's not just like for a thing. Like, he's been on airplanes that I've been on him with, and like, you look at his phone and just Sean but Paul. But is that when you're taking Pilates, Sean Paul, and then when you lift him weights, it's Sabbath? No, so, no, 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 I don't break it down like that. That's so I'm doing, you know. Because <laughs> <laughs> I would. I don't break it down into uh, what I think fits. I just, you know. I right. just kind of put it on a little Guys, bit. Guys, I, I, I got to promote a movie. Right. So, <laughs> what are we doing here? So, so what I was going to say was Sean Baker did, uh, uh, he was, I guess, one of the first guys to- Tangerine. Yeah, right. to make a movie all on iPhone. Yeah. You guys have done, I didn't realize, I've seen the trailers and stuff for Unsane. I didn't realize it was all on iPhone until I was reading about you, like, uh, yesterday. Mm-hmm. How, how is that, as, a, as an actor, like, to know, does it make you feel like, are we doing it, a movie here? It may, you know, if not for for the fact that Steven Soderbergh's right. standing behind the, the iPhone. iPhone. <laughs> it's it's, it's like, Soderbergh's phone. It's, so it's like if Steven Soderbergh was my dad mm -hmm. and we were like, hey, let's make some family movies, except here are the lines for our family movie that we're going to make and you're going to also be really evil. Right. Um, so that, that, that was the experience. But, but yeah, it's such a... I, I, I mean, look, I've got a 
16 month old kid so the iPhone is always coming out we we're, we're always using it it's this omnipresent piece of technology and it really it it, it does feel sometimes like are are we just are we just playing around here what are we doing it's, right. it it reduces you know, it doesn't feel like film with a capital F, where where any anybody takes themselves too seriously. Is there enough room on an iPhone? How, like, what do they have to do? Just keep dumping it? I mean, they have to keep dumping exactly. the information I, off it. I, I believe he had three be, iPhones. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great if they didn't dump it and they just had one phone and it was the whole movie? And on the last day of shooting, the thing just crashed. That lots of things. And he was like, crashes. "Fuck! I didn't set up <laughs> iCloud." Like, uh, shit. how are they? Ba- how are they backing it up? Like, are they backing it up as they shoot it? Or they're backing their? I mean, they're Backing it up as they shoot. I, th- I I believe he had three iPhones. It was the iPhone Seven when we shot. Um, what kind of lens? He had put lenses on it. Like you, did, sometimes, sometimes. And now, when I went in, I assumed uh, like a big from, ring for it or something. From because uh, I talked to Sean about making Tangerine, and they had a whole setup to mm-hmm. achieve the aesthetic they had on this film. So I I, I assumed we were going to have all the bells and whistles and. But the iPhone was more just, you know, this would be fun. Let's, let's, it's Steven Soderbergh's new experiment. Um, he really loves the fact that it's that small. That is, he loves being able to move fast. He loves the fact that you don't have to light a lot. And he loves the fact that you can put a phone anywhere. You can put it all the way up in the corner and, and walk away. You can change the, change the, uh, Lensing in five minutes. So I would say 75% of the time, it was just him holding the iPhone with no attachment filming us. Uh, what color was the phone? Wow. I believe it was a black one. Yeah, because I feel like... Maybe like, space gray? I have the red one, and I feel like that would make it I don't way know more distracting. Anybody with the red one. You also have a blue case on your phone, so who the fuck even knows I, well, I got his, the red His one. pink one broke. That's why. <laughs> That's... I don't have a pink, I never had a pink phone. For if you record. got a red phone, you have to have a pink case. No, it's, it's I got a red phone. Oh, that's yeah. nice. Looks like See? a dog dick. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid phone. <laughs> <laughs> buddy, buddy, it doesn't look anything like a dog Thank dick. Thank you. I'm Believe glad you're me, here. I've seen some dog dicks. Right. It doesn't look <laughs> Not like what a they dog look dick. like. <laughs> um, so yeah, sometimes he did have he had a little steady cam attachment. Occasionally, if he wanted to change the lens sizing, he'd pu- he'd put an adapter on. But a lot of times we just shot on the iPhone, and 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 the plan was to take it to Netflix, take it to a streaming service. But ultimately, it was when he was color correcting the movie and looked at it on a big screen that he realized that the image actually really held up, um, and and decided to do this big theatrical release, which excited the hell out of us. But on us. iPhone, yeah, can you zoom as well? Like it sounds stupid, but if you put it in the corner, doesn't you, don't you just get a faraway image? Um, yeah, so, so, like with a prime lens, um, you just move the camera where you want the shot to be, but it's also, I, I, I guess it shoots 4K, which is super high resolution, so if you wanted to, you could probably also zoom in in post-production about 20%. Yeah, like chop off the, you know what I mean, like stretch yeah, the screen yeah. out a little bit, yeah. Um, and this is Jay Farrow, this is his first He's funny. dramatic thing, right? I don't know. Is it his first I think dramatic? So. Thing? I know. I mean, from SNL, I don't. I don't know if he's done dramatic stuff before. I don't he think might've. he has. Yeah. I, I. I think he trained doing more dramatic stuff, and then, and then uh, ended up and, in comedy, and then ended up in comedy. He's great, though. Yeah. He's real. He's real natural. It's. It's got to be nice to be the funny guy in an otherwise um, scary, <laughs> 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 intense movie because everybody just loves you. You're like, oh, that guy. Thank God that guy's on screen because. Whenever Josh Leonard comes on screen, he's really mean. <laughs> At what point did you realize, because obviously we were talking about before you came in, people first got familiar with you from Blair Witch. So at what point after Blair Witch, because that was such a phenomenon, did you realize, okay, I'm going to be able to keep working? Because <sighs> um, people didn't even know you were actors <laughs> when that movie no, came out. No, that's true. We were we were listed on uh, IMDb as deceased. <laughs> my, 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 Is that real? Good, quite literally, my 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 folks got uh, because of that marketing campaign. My folks got condolence calls from people who hadn't seen the family in a while because wow. we used our real names in the film, and it was you know th- three kids: Josh Leonard, Heather Donahue, and Mike Williams, who went missing in the woods. And uh, this is their footage. So your so your 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 parents' friends thought that uh, you you died because of a ghost. <laughs> 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 well, I grew up in a cult. 
I mean, when you watch the movie, it seems more real than when you break it down yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> we, they were charismatics. What can I say? <laughs> Very scary uh, film. I, I saw that like a long time after it came out. It was already like the hype around oh, it. And you still liked it. I still liked it. Yeah, it was still frightening. I, I, I always thought that, I mean, I think the best way to see that film was before. Before you knew, yeah. Yeah, before you knew. Yeah, there, there was there there was kind of a time and a place where I think it was really exciting. But uh, when did you guys when did you guys decide to uh, break storyline on that and actually admit that you were actors? Because I remember in the promotion for it, I think like I was a kid and I was watching like TRL or something on MTV. And I don't know if you were on. Do you know like, how that makes me feel when you're like, I, I was a, when I was a kid. Well, my, my my wife, by the way, was like, my parents wouldn't let me watch that. Movie. I'm like, go fuck yourself, for real. Go fuck yourself. That's perfect, though. You married someone who was too young to enjoy your film. That's good for you. you. Like that. Yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. So so if you met somebody that was like, uh, you put on like your first couple specials, and they were like, I wasn't even born. Would dick, you... My dick goes fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, not the first couple. My first one was 2007. I'm not uh, that fucked up. <laughs> oh, I'm, I his guess current girlfriend hasn't seen his last Netflix special. <laughs> <laughs> so, but like, when did you guys decide to just uh, break away from it and just admit you were actors? Because I remember watching. I think it, that was the show that I watched to be like, what the, what the fuck? I thought that they were all dead. <laughs> this was real life. And um, I, I think. What was it? It was probably about a week after the movie came out that um, that that we started doing a bunch of press on it. They they kept us hidden, which which for us as actors was was a bummer because we were you know broke and scrappy and right. we we're like we have this movie that you know is going to can. No, you guys can't go to can. <laughs> yeah. uh, we have this movie that you know is doing all these. And no, you guys can't do it. It's got all this You're buzz dead. on it. You're yeah, dead. No. Just you know. And I don't hold many crutches <laughs> in this world because it's not good and it eats you up inside. I will say that artists in entertainment who put that uh, who put that movie out, the one nice thing they ever did for us uh -huh. was uh, was when the movie hit a hundred million domestically, they sent us each fruit baskets. Other than that, we, we were pretty <laughs> much just getting yelled at. Is that it, really? Yeah. So they were scumbags. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because there's no way you guys you guys didn't really get paid a ton for that movie because nobody knew it was going to make. We didn't get paid a ton. How much did and you we... make for that movie? Did you, did you get like you're literally did you, they, was it a few thousand dollars or less? And there was no back I, end. I, I, I to made it? to make the movie. We made uh, about uh, we we made exactly five hundred dollars a week for two weeks. So I made a grand doing the movie. I had one back end point on the movie. Which I was so broke when we made it that I begged the producers to let me sell my back end point for an extra five hundred bucks. They were like, "We can't do it, man. Oh, we don't, we don't have the money." Wow! Oh my God! So what, you have what, you have one percent back end. So I had, and I mean, come on, you know Hollywood accounting, so it's not. I, I listed on my uh, uh, Wikipedia page for years. Evidently, I didn't know this until somebody told me was was the fact that we made said we made like four million bucks on the movie, which is not true. You didn't at make all. four million. Did not make four million. Um, Did you reach into the seven figures? No, didn't reach into the Shit. seven figures. But that's like one of the biggest horror movies ever. Look, man, I, I got a career out of it. I, I did see some money. We had to take him to federal court in order to get the money. Oh, what fucking no, no. scumbags. <laughs> like, it's amazing how they, they make a $60,000 film turns into, what, $100 million or $250 million worldwide? Million, yeah. And they just can't. They got to fuck the actors. What pieces of well, shit? And it was, it, what was happening at the time was even funnier because they would be putting all these articles out. Variety would be like, Artisan Entertainment says... Blair Witch is the most successful film of all times. And then they'd call us up and they'd be like, guys, look, I know we made another 80 million in uh, DVD release, but uh, between the uh, press and the PNA and the DVD buybacks, we actually spent like 110. No. So here's the thing. You guys are actually in the hole to us like another <laughs> 30 million. So we're going to have to knock that off for it. <laughs> So it wasn't, it was, it, I, I mean, look, whatever. I, On the I, movie I, with the lowest budget of all time, by the way. Yeah, what terrible. Somehow it was really, it was, yeah. yeah. So you took, they, take they, them were, to... they were like, we paid a lot of money for those fruit baskets. <laughs> <laughs> Who art is in uh, the uh, distributor, you mean? The uh -oh. distributor. Yeah. Um, yeah, I love the people I made the movie with. Um, I think Artisan did a fantastic job marketing the oh, movie. Yeah. And, um, and, and, and look, bad, bad. 
bad feelings about finance aside, I I am, you know, what a cool thing to have been involved and with. And you're in a sure. happy place now. I'm in a happy place Because you're now. working I mean, and like, yeah. It's you know, an iconic it's, fucking it's, movie. I just asked my friend last night, um, it's like, is, is anybody happy? Is, what do you guys think? Oh, in general? Just in general. Is, oh. that, is anybody truly happy? Sam is when he goes to Chili's. That's true. When I'm in Encino, oh my God. But are people happy? Am I just surrounded by miserable people? <laughs> at this moment, and you are. <laughs> 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 I, I've, uh, I've asked myself that. I, I've said that too. Like, is anybody happy? Or are they just pretending? I don't know. I think people are happy. You think people are happy? Yeah. I don't think... A friend of mine just hung himself, too. He's a mental health speaker. Okay, so yeah, he, yeah. That actually he goes, wasn't. That goes against your theory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, it is what it is. Like, you know, people, like, they do good, and then they're not doing good anymore. That's what it is. I feel like my wife is happy. Yeah, well, he's delusional. But she, especially, <laughs> she's not. Especially when you're here. Yeah. <laughs> you said used to be wrong. <laughs> Maybe that's it. No, I think they I think that but there I, is. Well, was, I, I was talking to um, Natasha Leone, and, and she was talking about uh, her boyfriend, Fred Armisen, and she she was like, Fred's happy. Fred's Fred's really happy. Every morning he wakes up and he eats grape nuts, and he loves his grape nuts. He's just so happy to the get up and- grape nuts make him happy. Play songs and eat grape nuts. I was like, that's so weird. Yeah. It does sound like a yeah. fun way to wake up. Hot girl in your bed and having grape nuts. I would enjoy that. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. You wouldn't mind that? <laughs> no, not at all. What you a fun way to wake up. I, have, I feel like you could have that. I feel like that's an attainable dream for you. You can at least get the part, grape yeah. nuts, yeah. Yeah, the loving person next to me, forget it. <laughs> that ship has sailed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I guess, no, I don't know. Other than my wife, I don't know anybody that I would be like, yeah, that person's just... A happy person. But you married a happy person. I did That's marry a happy great. person. Yeah, she is. She's she's an optimistic, pleasant, happy person. Yep. It's really yeah, weird. I look. I I love my wife, but she's she, not happy. But she's angry. She is. She she's Canadian. So are I, they angry people? I thought Canadians I thought were Canada, mellow. Yeah, they're angry at home, man. Oh, they're polite but angry. What part of Canada? Uh, she she grew up in Toronto. Okay. Yeah. What does she do? She's an actress. She's on Broadway right now. That's oh, the okay. reason I'm in New York City. Because I was about she's... to say, maybe she's angry that you're in a movie, but she's on Broadway. So she's got no, nothing to be... she's, 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 she's doing just fine. Yeah. <laughs> she's doing uh, the Albee play, the Edward Albee play, Three Tall Women with uh, Laurie Metcalf and Glenda Jackson. Oh, yeah. She's, she's absolutely doing yeah, just they, fine. Yeah, they open this Thursday. That's amazing. So. Are you staying here for it? Yeah, we're we're temporary New Yorkers. We've been here since January with the kid and the dog, and um, and we're here through the end of June. Do you like it here? I love it here. Yeah, I you, live. I, where'd I mean, you grow I, up? I grew up in Pennsylvania. Okay. She grew up in Toronto, so we're Northeast people. Or guess, how did you meet her? We met at a <laughs> we met at a pool party. Sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> neither of us were swimming. If it makes a difference, a little bit. Um, we met at a pool party at uh, Mark Duplass's house, and uh, we we had a mutual friend, and I asked for her phone number. Um, I'd, I'd loved her. I'd seen her on stage a few times and always loved her, had a talent crush on her, and I asked uh, I asked our buddy for, for her phone number, and he was like, he's kind of a stoner. He was like, yeah, I'll ask her, and she evidently said, yeah, give him my number. And then a week later, I texted him back. I was like, so did she not want? <laughs> he was like, oh, fuck, man. Oh, yeah, no, she did. Meanwhile, she was evidently real not happy with me. She was like, who is this douchebag? Right. Asked for my number. And then never call. calls me. <laughs> so when you called her, and you, you just you called her for the first time, or did you text? I texted. I would have, too. Yeah. yeah. Always. Yeah. Text. No, I texted. I mean, such, such better potential for yes. banter and less potential for disaster. Yeah, and 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 embarrassment because you get you get to edit a text. You can think through your shit. You Although do. now it's a little more difficult to edit a text because those three dots come up on the iPhone. Unless they're looking for it, you, you don't they know. Don't see it. And that's only if you allow that. You don't have to allow them to see that you're responding. Oh, how do we turn that off? I didn't even know you could turn that. I off. I know sure. the red receipts you can turn off. I didn't realize you could turn off the three dots too. Sure, you could turn off anything you want. No, oh, I didn't know. Guys, remember that I movie think. that just opened up? <laughs> Speaking of oh, yeah. iPhones, I was yeah. just about to say. <laughs> Speaking of iPhones, the really great thing you can do in, uh, with an iPhone is film a great movie like Unsane, which is now uh, in theaters. Uh, and this thing... Uh, it's really scary. It's really... It, it looks it, really, really good. It's, it kinda, it's a cool, demented movie. It's got, it's got a little bit of a social message, but really it just uh, it's just fun to watch. And Claire Foy... Yeah. 
Claire Foy, who's the lead, who played the queen in that show, The Crown. I don't know if you guys saw that. Sure, it was great. She was fantastic, and that de- demolishes everything she ever did with this performance. Um, she is fierce and scary and mean and awesome in this. She's such a fantastic actor. Well, yeah, basically, the lady has a stalker, uh, or she says she has a stalker, and then she goes to a therapist because she's seen the stalker all the time, and then... Uh, the, I guess, based on the trailer, the therapist ends up locking her up in a mental institution, and then you start to not be able to tell if What's she right? is locked in there against her will or if she actually is crazy. I mean, I mean, which is one of my reoccurring nightmares. Yeah. Because if you're in a mental institution and you're like, I'm not crazy, they're like, yeah, that's what people say in the mental institution. And because it's they, like being in prison, they, being like, I didn't do it. But even worse in prison than in prison because... The crazy people in the mental in, mental institution probably actually believe that they're not crazy. But aren't we all in a prison, guys? Oh my god! What I'm just saying, <laughs> in the government man. <laughs> is that what your trainer tells you to? She yeah, sure does. To motivate you. Back. She says we're all in a prison. T- yeah. <laughs> no, but I mean, like prison a, of our own minds. A crazy person. Uh huh. If they're really crazy, would not think that they're crazy. <laughs> So they'd be like, I'm not supposed to be in here. No, I, I I, mean, I remember a long time ago. This is back to the 90s, the last time I did acid. But, um, <laughs> but, but being on acid, trying to go like, no, I know you think that this thought is insane because I'm on acid. But there really is a party in the trunk of my car, and I need you. I need you to. I need you to come see it. I really need you to. I just need you to tell me that I'm not burning in a gas oven right now. <laughs> should I actually woke a roommate up once on acid to say, "Hey, man, I don't need to freak, freak you out. Um, I'm fine. I'm fine." I'm just, can you just tell me my face is burning right now? <laughs> and you were sure of it because your brain wouldn't lie to you. I, I, I was, I was pretty sure. I needed. Um... Didn't you throw water on it instead of waking your roommate up? I did that first, but it was still burning. Burned, so. Yeah, <laughs> was that? It's that waterproof fire. <laughs> that, that had your face. Did all you look burning. in the mirror and it was on fire? Or yeah, you just... yeah. No, oh, you're was... probably under the influence of drugs. Oh, he did. Good call. Yeah, yeah. Good call. <laughs> yeah. No, it's true. <laughs> well, why did you woke up and hearing that? Time ago. Why'd you stop doing acid? It sounds like it's a blast. <laughs> you a what did your roommate say? Your was he smart enough to say, yes, it was? <laughs> Quick, put it in the toilet where the water is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let me get it for oh. you. Oh, we, thank God the 90s are over. Yeah, why'd you, why, why, did you stop doing drugs altogether? I did. Why? <clears throat> a long time ago. Because cause my face always got on fire. <laughs> I got gotcha. you. And you have a beard now. There's a lot more to burn. It's true. It's true. <laughs> Who? Uh, oh, that was Michael Jackson who caught on fire. Right? Did a Pepsi commercial? Yeah, Pepsi yeah. lit him on fire. Uh, it was it's terrible. terrible. Yeah, yeah. And then he died. He did not of that. No, it was, it was much, much later. But yeah. he did. He's he a did bad pass sleeper. Away. He wasn't a great did, sleeper. That, that, but that might have been the inciting incident, though. Well, yeah, his scalp it was hurt. Just, I, I feel like there's there's some direct line that into we pain could, pills. Maybe we could draw there, sure. right? Pain pills. Yeah, a lot sure. of people after an injury get hooked on fucking pain pills, and that's the beginning of the end, right? And and now, I, I mean, with the the oxys and the fucking fentanyl, that's scary, man. The, the yeah. I've got a buddy of mine who um, who works in recovery in Los Angeles, and everybody they're 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 lacing fentanyl with uh, with the dope out there right now, and people are just over. This is a comedy show. Why am I talking about? Because this? it's well, hilarious. Uh, <laughs> 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 no, it's just because uh, I feel like that was one of the things he was on. He was he was on the Twilight sleep drugs and the fentanyl. What was was that him or was that Prince? Oh, I'm terrible. My Prince was on. Um... I don't know. Michael Jackson was did propofol. That yeah, was Michael what Jackson him. was propofol. Uh, trying okay. to sleep. Yeah. Conrad Murray, Dr. Conrad Murray, uh, oh, didn't poor, monitor him properly. Poor Conrad Murray. He's still I in know. jail, right? He's a good singer, though. No, he's out. He only did a, he did like a couple, couple of years. years. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, Joe so List is here, poor, by the way. So what should we do? Do you want um, we have to break or do you want to just keep going? Well, we should. We should. What's your scare? Are you hanging? I'm. I'm. I'm fine. But you can also kick me out. <laughs> okay. I, I. I got a yoga class at eleven. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's fine. You want to just bring Joe in? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, let's just bring Joe List in. I'll put him over there. Put him where? Next to you. Yes. Yes, Joe. Li- Do you know Joe List? He's a comedian. His Netflix special. I love Joe List. Uh, premiered on. <laughs> it's very good. 
Hi, Premier. Joe List. Hello, Joe. On Friday, this is Netflix's Joe List. Also, you may have seen him from The Tonight Show. Your credits got a lot better over the last weekend. Uh, yes, thank you. Thank you. I mean, they, were, they were decent before, I think. Uh, but yeah, thank you. It was exciting. It's been a crazy week. Unbelievable. I didn't see uh, the special. I heard it was great. I didn't see the Tonight Show. I heard you killed. Yeah, it was exciting. And I got a kind of a standing O situation, which was very exciting. Oh, that's but, yeah, nice. To be honest, yeah. they were standing for everybody that came out. So I know, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, but people keep writing, you got a standing O. And I went, yeah, fuck it. Yeah, yeah, yeah I did. And didn't Fallon say something about that? Like at the end, like, oh, it's a standing Well, yeah, yeah he, he pointed to it. it. And yeah, then the yeah. crowd, yeah, the, the cameras went to the standing O and show, actually showed it. Yeah, so. it was pretty exciting. So, uh, and uh, Jim Jeffries was on, and uh, I could hear him talking while I was performing. Like, he had a couple cocktails, and then like he would say, like, uh, oh, that's great. That's a great joke. And I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I'm like, I'm doing my set here. While you, so while you were shooting, you could, you could hear. Yeah, like I'm in the middle of my set, and I can hear. I mean, like, he was being nice, but like I could hear, like, just like, oh, that's good, mate. Or whatever. I can't do it. So, like, Come on. And then a lady yelled out, like I was doing a joke about weightlifting and guys that grunt. I'm a hack. But uh, some lady, I was going like, ah, and some lady went, yeah. And I was like, what the fuck? Shut the fuck up. It yeah. would be funny I, if you I, snapped or called her a cunt. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've had that with directors that I worked with before where, where I'm in the middle of, of, of doing a scene and, and they're back going like, yeah. Yeah, that's great. I'm like, dude, I can fucking hear you. I'm I've never heard that while I was acting. <laughs> that's, that's or, right. or conversely, nope. Yeah. <laughs> nope. That doesn't work Not at like all. That. Yeah, I wouldn't think that there'd be... Uh, Hecklers are people trying to include themselves on the show at the Tonight Show. Well, I guess people, they were heckling. It was like a, a mother and daughter, and they were heckling the whole show. I wasn't listening because I was in the back, you know, masturbating, but uh, <laughs> they were just heckling the whole time. And I guess Jimmy had to be like, hey, you got to stop. We're going to kick you out. It was like a whole situation. On the commercial break, did he say that? I guess, yeah. You don't so think they, he said it like, lot, like in the middle of an interview segment? <laughs> no, that would have been great, though. <laughs> He's um, like, hey, shut up. Hey, shut up in the audience. Well, who does that? Who goes to a TV taping and like, tries to be a part of the show. Like, if, 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 if any place you're going to realize that, no, it's the performer show. Well, maybe that's the drinking. Tonight Show. People are drinking. Yeah, she, uh, they, they got free tickets, probably from out of town, had a couple drinks and them, went like to the tape. It's like 5 o'clock. I, I also like to think that maybe it was the audience giving the standing O to drown out the hecklers. It was, it was like <laughs> yeah. everybody rose in solidarity and gave you a slow clap just to be like, we're with you, not with the hecklers. That might be. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, Either way, it counts. But yeah, I, it was also it was a it was an eight p.m. taping. To be oh, fair, oh, so okay. I mean oh. that, that's just breeding hecklers. Yeah, was it a Thursday night show? Thursday they did it for night, Friday, yeah, right? Second, yeah, second taping. So yeah, um, that's better for a comedy show. Yeah, it was kind of nice. It felt like a normal time to be on stage. So. Right, instead of five o'clock, they don't want to tape at like five five thirty. Yeah, you know? yeah. Do you actually enjoy it, or um, or do you just enjoy the fact that you did it? I'm terrified the whole time leading up, but uh, I actually got into a pretty good. Place this time, I was like, I got it. This is gonna be good. This will be fun or whatever. You felt yeah. good about the set. I felt pretty good about the set. Yeah, and it was the first time I've done a late night where I didn't flub a line. I've I've done three before and I've flubbed a line at some point where I just go. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah, <laughs> and, uh, it's hard because your head just gets out of, in front of yourself and you're like, this is insane. Do you go back and have them take it out or did you just leave it in? I just left it in all three times. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know it was an option. I mean, can you do that? Uh, I guess they would if it was a major problem. Yeah, they. Oh, well, they, I, I did. I should say, Conan. They did offer, and then they were like, "It looks better with it." Because I was, I was trying to say, "I'm traumatized," and I went, "I'm, tra I'm, tra I'm, tra I'm traumatized. I'm traumatized right now," and I got like kind of a laugh. Oh yeah, yeah. So they were like, "It makes you look better," but I think they just didn't want to edit. So they're like, "It makes yeah, you look better." Right, yeah, better. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect. It's good. <laughs> yeah, it shows God. humanity. <laughs> Get out of here. But um, yeah, it's fucking stressful. That's why I hate all the every YouTube of every late night ever. There's at least one guy being like, he seems nervous. I'm like, yeah, I'm fucking nervous, man. I'm on TV. My whole life is like built to this moment. It's nerve wracking. There's yeah. a camera, fucking, it's TV. People are just cunty too, though. You know, no matter what you do, there's always somebody cunty. Like, because you obviously you killed, you got a standing O. They can't knock the set. So you know, yeah, he looked, he looked nervous. He didn't yeah. look comfortable. Yeah, it's uh, and it's your pacing's got to be a little slower too, right? Has to be. Especially with the applause breaks, like the, you'll get like a delayed one. Yeah. I thought it was one one of the jokes you got. Got like you were ready to go on the next one. All of a sudden they started clapping. Like okay, I got to wait this out. Yeah, it's weird. And then sometimes you'll have an applause that makes a tag just seem retarded. Where like the tagline is like, "That's what I said." <laughs> it's like, it's like a big long applause, and then you're like just used to saying it, so you're like. That's right. And they're like, what? <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> it's a zero. And they're like, oh, I should have just left that out. 
But uh, anyway, well, congratulations, man! And the spe- when did the special? What's the special called? Uh, it's the stand-ups, the season two of the stand-ups. So it's okay. a series more of, than a special, really. Okay, that's not a half hour on Netflix. That's great, dude. Yeah, it's exciting. It came out Tuesday, and it's just been uh, it's been insane. It's like it's overwhelming. I yeah. feel like fucking George Bailey. Everyone's just writing really nice things, and it's who's George Bailey? Sweet. He's uh, it's a Wonderful Life. Okay. Oh. I remember that movie. Yeah, Jimmy yeah. Stewart. It's on yeah. Christmas Eve, NBC. <laughs> Check it out. I didn't recognize his name from the film. I'm here to plug it. Uh, <laughs> December 24th, 8 p.m. NBC. Isn't that what would have happened if he never existed? How would life have been for those people? Yeah, that's like the last 45 minutes, and then he comes back, and it's it's a special. You guys should watch it. It's really no. I've great. seen I've seen the film. I've I seen it many years. I don't remember the... it. Oh. Yeah, no, it is a good one. Well, and everyone he... comes and says really nice things, and they bring them money. It's a whole thing. It's on every Christmas Eve. Yeah. Yeah. Team yeah. black and white. No, I'm looking at it right now. It's uh just watching it. Nineteen forty six. No, I'm just looking at the actual picture. Oh, yeah. okay. I see. I see. I'm in his fucking dumb TV family. Did you watch the Netflix special back? Uh, or do you I not watch? Wa- no, I, I won't watch that. I watched the Tonight Show. I was at the cellar, which was fun. They put it on. Are you comfortable uh, watching in front of people? I could never. I've done that one time, and I actually had to go into the basement. I can't watch it with people in the room. Yeah, it was pretty brutal. It was at the cellar, and then first of all, Gnome, the owner, plays music on Friday night, so he's playing, and they're like, "We got to put it on." And I was like, "Well, I, 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 Gnome's playing," and they're like, "No, no, we'll tell him to stop." So Liz, the manager, walks over and tells Gnome to stop playing his music at his <laughs> own club. And I'm like, well, this is uncomfortable. And you can just feel the vibe of like, all right, we're going to go watch Joe Lit. Like, everyone had just been singing along. <laughs> <and> yeah. <laughs> no, no pressure. And uh, so they put it on. But yeah, it was like brutally uncomfortable. But people were laughing. And like, Ryan Hamilton was there, who's like the sweetest man on you earth. You can't find a more encouraging man than Ryan No, Hamilton. no. He was like belly laughing. And I think it was all fake. But it was like <laughs> yeah. really sweet. He it's understands. Nice. Um, and then I had to go to the Village Underground. My set was like... At exactly that time, I mean, Artie Fuqua was hosting, so I was fine. But yeah, you do. <laughs> then, uh, 15, fifteen minute buffer. <laughs> they like jogged me over there, and then Artie's like, "This guy was just on the Tonight Show," and then I go up and just fucking eat it for like five <laughs> minutes. You? Well, it's like twelve thirty, and the show started at eleven. And they're drunk, and it's Friday night, and they don't give a shit. So Thank I'm just like us. literally bombing. I ended up getting them when I went into some dick jokes, but I was just eating it. 30 <laughs> seconds after my triumphant Don't you hate so. a big intro when you get a big intro and you're like this guy just and then you go up and you know the crowd is like this guy fucking stinks <laughs> He stinks so, <laughs> so, <laughs> I, I, And I think what they're doing is they're like, okay, show me Right now Tough you gotta guy. prove it. All right. All right big shot. Yeah, <laughs> see what like 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 the the pressure to perform just goes up by powers of 10 I yeah, actually stopped because of expectation. I feel like the only way anybody has ever liked me in anything is because of low expectations. Right. They go in with low expectations like, and like they're it, like, that was, that I was, actually changed that was the that intro. Bad. I would give the intro to the host, but then I'm like, I think I'm sabotaging my I finally stopped doing it. <laughs> I, I, I I would always have the host say, ladies and right. gentlemen, do you like special guests? You're in for a treat. And they're like, who fucking cares? Yeah, I guess it, that's why everybody thought you were like brilliant in Blair Witch because they thought you were just a dead guy who had a camera on him. They didn't even know you were an actor. I mean, yeah, I talked in that movie so much much better than most dead right. guys talk. Right. So the expectations are low. Makes sense. It's uh, do you, does that is that enough to take away the high from the Tonight Show? Like, is that how quickly? Um, no. I mean, I still feel. I mean, it's actually helped because you're bombing and you're like, you guys don't know shit. You fucking, idiot. <laughs> <laughs> fucking animals. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I feel good. It feels it's exciting. You know, it feels yeah. it's fun. It's fun to because uh, most of the times you're just. You know, doing a fucking bar show in New Haven, right. so it's nice to have a few moments of like uh, feeling like you're in show business. Th- there's there's things that like you feel validate you when you're performing. Like, all right, that make that validates me. Like, <laughs> all right, I'm not worthless. I actually I'm good at what I do because this th- these people said it, and then people watched it and enjoyed it, and you feel validated. Well, especially when you're meeting people like regular people, where they're like, oh, you're a comedian like, over here or something. They're like, you're a comic, and you can be like, oh, I was on the Tonight Show. Like, uh, yeah, right. people assume that you're like a Make a Wish kid that's like goes <laughs> up and like because they don't know who you are. They have obviously. no idea. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, they know who you are. They don't know who. Some know who I am. A lot don't. Yeah. Is that the right? Majority. Uh, yeah. Oh. I go through life <laughs> too <bad>. unscathed, <laughs> <laughs> unmolested for <laughs> photos. Is that right? <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is it ever the crowd's fault? You, you said always wrong. <laughs> <laughs> it's always the fucking crowd's fault. Is that right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck them. Yeah, I get annoyed. Like Seinfeld, he's like, it's never the crowd. These comedians. I'm like, well, what do you mean? Like, I'm saying the same exact things that I said before. He didn't say that in his documentary when they were fucking talking to governors. He didn't say it wasn't their fault. Right. 
It's funny how he changed his tune then. No, <laughs> what if they're just not laughing? What if they're not? Sometimes heckling? I stink. No, sometimes I suck, and there's other times where they suck. It's it's whatever. You, but we, we most guys know, right? Yeah, you know? mostly it's the crowd. It is. Yeah. yeah you, you, this time's during a off, weird group. It could be who's opening for you. They set a, a wrong tone or whatever. They just came in. Maybe they're pissed because the ro- show's running late. They're not getting drinks. It could be a million different things. But I'll go on sometimes and go. I was wrong. Like the seller was good one night or whatever. Or I didn't have. Eh, I wasn't that great. I didn't give you people what you deserve. Like, there's been nights where I'm fucking around. I'm not that good. We know it. Right. But that's when you're just trying stuff. Well, yeah, or you yeah. just don't have it. There's nights where you're just off. There's, there's nights where you go on and you just don't click. You know, there's plenty of times I'm just like, eh, I'm delivering this stuff shitty. Did you, uh, did you watch the other Netflix specials? No, I haven't. I mean, I saw some of the tapings, but uh, I, can't, I can't watch. It's brutal. Yeah. yeah. I don't like it either. Why don't you like to watch it? You, do you get, like, impatient or do you get depressed? I just hate myself, and then also it's like, That'll there's no it. comedy on TV does not translate. Like even like you know, uh, like Bring the Pain is like an amazing special, but if you saw it live, it would be a hundred times better. It's hard to capture, so you're like, the joke is better than that, or uh, I hate my face and my teeth, and I just deep deep hatred for myself. Yeah, so, no, uh, it's good. I understand <laughs> it. It's, right. it's healthy for a comedy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's brutal. I mean, it's it's horrible. I yeah. hate everything I've said so far. <laughs> uh, no, it's a but, but at least it's optimistic for where we're going, right? Yeah, I mean, people like it. See, people seem to like it. They're writing nice things to me. That's uh, great. Yeah. It's yeah. nice. And then the people that don't, I've, I've been writing back, which is actually kind of enjoyable. Everyone's like, just ignore it, block them. But I'm like, I've kind of been getting in dialogues with people. It's kind of fun. Yeah, sometimes they're sometimes they're dicks, and then you're a dick back, and they're like, "Oh, I was just kidding." And then what are they saying just... about what are they saying? Well, one guy, I had three different people. I do a joke about a woman telling me I have a five head, and then then hijinks ensues. I've had three different people be like, <laughs> "You're a hack." That's from like middle school, That's and not... I'm like, "Yeah, I'm not presenting it as I came up with five head. I'm telling a story <laughs> about a girl sure. in middle school saying it." Right, and then there's jokes that follow. Like, I'm the like, jokes are about you being called that, not. The fact that it's funny that a bigger forehead would be a five head. Yeah, it's yeah. like my bit's not like, hey folks, I just came up with a funny thing to call people with big foreheads. How about this? Five head. Good night, <laughs> folks. <laughs> like, I like it. Like, I'm like, oh. All right. And then you follow it up with a good D's nuts joke and get yeah. off the stage. Yeah. So it's like, I'm just, I, I wrote to a guy, I was like, well, you're just, you don't comprehend the joke. He was like, you suck. This is hack. You should be embarrassed. And I was like, well, I don't mind that you don't like me, but like, I, I'm just doing a joke about a middle school girl saying this to me. And then he wrote back, the rest was great, congrats. <laughs> 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 they really kind of fold sometimes if you write back. They're Especially not. when they know they're wrong. Once they won't admit it, but it's like when you present it like that, it's like, all right, yeah, I misread his joke. Yeah. Well, so often it's just I, a cry for attention, too. Sure. Whether it's negative or positive. And Do you mean stand-up in general? You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I also always think a jo- joke is funnier once you explain why it's funny. Oh, you like that? Always. Like, yeah. When you break oh, down. You did, oh, oh, you didn't laugh. <laughs> let me tell you. Let me tell you why you didn't laugh. Let me tell you why this joke is empirically funny, guys. <laughs> I'll explain it to you. I enjoy that. I'll do political stuff that I'll explain my own poignancy. Well, you know. <laughs> yeah, Jim does like pop up video, but for comedy, where he just explains all of his jokes right after them. I would love to do that. Go over my old specials and just destroy them in a pop up video style. Well, that's what I mean. Florentine didn't destroy his stuff, but. You did a whole album just reading your old joke books, right? Yeah, my first uh, comedy notebook, yeah. yeah. Reading the jokes. Are some of them and, good? Uh, <laughs> no. What's great about, <laughs> Not one. What's great about the album is he doesn't comment on any of it. He just reads the jokes, except like every like 20 minutes, you're just hearing, oof. <laughs> and then just keep going. <laughs> I can't hold it in. No. I just... My first comedy notebook has a, or maybe my second comedy notebook, has a, a cutout from the newspaper of Dane Cook taped into it, and then a, st- a Robert Kelly sticker. Why? Those were my guys when I was 19. <laughs> I was like, These awesome. guys are, oh, really? Like, you, oh, from Torgasm and stuff? Yeah, yeah. Well, it was like pre-Torgasm, but I would see them um, at like the Comedy Connection. Were you, oh, you're from Boston? Yeah. Is there so any better like, room, by the way, than the... I was just talking about the old Connection, that fucking... It was like a black box. Oh, I loved it. it was, that What an amazing place to that perform. That was great. Like I had, 500 seats. I had sex on that stage one time. I also slept on that stage. That was like my home. I same drink same night. Uh, <laughs> two different nights. The night I had sex on it, I got the hell out of it because if someone realized we were over there and turned the spotlights on, and we kind of scrammed. It was classic. <laughs> and why'd you sleep there? Uh, I was just drunk. I was so drunk, and then I had a, I'd driven into the city. I live at my parents' house, so oh. I couldn't drive home. So I just uh, 
curled up on the stage. I, I thought it'd be like, and there was a green room with like a couch, but I thought it'd be like romantic to be like, I slept on the stage. Yeah, like oh, the yeah. Like, what's his name? <laughs> Meanwhile, it was like a couch with like blankets on it, but I was like, no, no, I'm on the, I'm on the stage. Who's the guy from Yes that does it? The lead singer, like John Anderson. What's his name? John Anderson. It is John Anderson. Yeah, he sleeps on the stage a lot of times the night before. I've heard. Oh, wow. like, it's weird. I like how artistic you are about it. Like yeah. you'll sleep on the stage to get closer to the art. You'll collage about it. Yeah, whatever you, uh, whatever you need to do. And I'll, and I'll bang on there. I feel, I feel like two pictures is not a collage. Sure it is. I if feel you, like that's cheating. If, that, if you that's go that's, that's and, a really lazy ass collage. I mean, it's not the greatest collage in the yeah. world, but if you've gone through and cut a, a picture out. Do you know how long it takes to cut a picture of Bob Kelly out now? <laughs> 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 Bob um, Kelly uh, in Unsafe. I watched him on the big screen. It was so exciting. I didn't know he was in there. Is he in Unsafe? He's the cop. He's the fat oh, yeah, bald yeah, cop. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unsane. 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 Sorry. Unsafe. But, but, unsane. yeah, he's fantastic. Who else I didn't know Bob was in that movie. Sorry. I was off by uh, a letter. Goldthwait. Goldthwait was saying he knows him. He's friends with him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah I didn't he, know. He was great. I didn't have any scenes with him, but I watched him in the movie and thought he was awesome. He was, uh, it was fun. It was really fun. So you're okay watching your own movies? No, I <laughs> You don't like that? It. No, it's excruciating. Is that because you hate I, yourself on your face, too? I did most of the time. And okay. I did, my uh, a friend of mine asked me. He was like, "How how's the movie?" I was like, "I'm fat." <laughs> yeah. uh, that's my review. It's my two word review. Oh, I thought you were great. I thought it was great. Oh, thanks. It man. was fun. It's fun to see a friend on screen though when you're not expecting them. Yes. Like all of yeah. a sudden you're like, "What?" Or it can totally ruin it for you. <laughs> What's that? It can totally Does ruin it. Ruin it? Yeah. 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 Well, if he was like the bad guy, I feel like if you guys switched roles, it would be unsettling to see Bobby. You know. <laughs> Yeah, or if you if you like watching fucking Game of Thrones and Ryan Hamilton walks in, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love the movie. I thought it was great. Oh, thanks, man. It is. Yeah, I, I mean, it's, look, especially the role I play in this movie is not. Um, I felt. I, I mean, I felt so bad for my wife. We went to a screening and. We got in the cab to drive back, and I was like, "I'm so sorry. I'm so, I'm so sorry. You have to sleep next to me tonight." Yeah, you're I'm a real so jerk sorry. in the movie. Yeah, yeah, I'm real, <laughs> real creepy. Un unkind. Really, not a nice guy. It is funny though that we just see the one thing about ourselves that we hate the most, and that's all we'll see for the entire thing. Like you saw a fat guy on the screen for the whole movie. You just so you see, see your face. <laughs> uh, that's right, zinger. <laughs> 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 just kidding. But you just can't. You can't. But yeah, you can't get over it, right? You can't. Escape no, that we're thing. really, we're really vain motherfuckers. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. Well, there's nothing wrong with that. Well, I thought you don't think so. I mean, seeing your one flaw, no, and just and just locking onto it for the entire thing. There's something wrong with that. Well, yeah, the locking is. on part might not be good. Not great. Just noticing it's okay. We, of course, noticing it is fine, but when that's all you see, that's. I mean, yeah. it's bad. That's it. Good. It did. Speaking of speaking of my eleven o'clock yoga class, <laughs> <laughs> it did. I watched the movie. I was like. I, I gotta I gotta work out. Oh, is that what and, motivates and I, you? And I have been. I have been. I yeah, you, like, look, I you look better. Thanks, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm here to help everybody. So, I'm in a sensitive spot in my life. And, um, I just yeah, it's to say that's a compliment about you now, but also means that you he also saw a fat guy. And he's saying you were right. You were look like shit. Yeah, you were a fat moment. guy in the movie. In, in fairness, I was I was in. I had tried really hard. I'd just gotten done with. Um, I directed a movie and I'd, I'd been in post production for about six months, just eating in a dark room. <clears throat> and I finished that, and I started getting back in shape. And uh, I was like, I should, you know, I got, I got, I got to get a gig. I got to get a gig. And I got, a, I got called and asked to do this thing. And the first time I got on the phone with Stephen, um, he was like, Yeah, no, you got to put twenty pounds back on. Oh, that's kind of nice, though, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, I'd worked really hard to get that. <laughs> right. Why do you want you to put twenty back on? Um, because because I play a creepy, pathetic stalker who okay. who essentially lives in his dad's basement. Okay. And I had a pitch. I was like, I was like, what if this guy's like a creepy outward bound counselor? <laughs> and he was like, Nah, he's just on the internet and eating takeout food. See, I just saw him as misunderstood. Uh, that's a joke. Oh, okay. I, don't I didn't know. see if it. You saw the film. <laughs> we didn't see the really yeah, we didn't see the movie. Is it in theaters it's now? Creepy guy. Uh, it's called that? Unsane. Yeah, it yeah, is it's in, in theaters, theaters now. now. It's in theaters. Yeah, I saw it uh, this yeah. Friday. Well, I'll go so see it. it. I don't think about that. 
<laughs> oh. I see it now. You just misunderstood. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was funny. And by the way, anybody who who defends my character, you should not let them date your sister. Is that right? <laughs> I want to try to see this movie. And try to see it. It's it's, it's in it's theaters. Good. It's, it's easy. It's yeah, upsetting. just go boom. Yeah. Yeah, you got to take it in advance, or should I just get one? <laughs> <laughs> She's working out how theaters work. So, how did you gain the weight? Did you were you because. Some of these actors, I just, I just, you just, I ain't, just right? stopped losing weight. That's really, I mean, my default, my default is I go up. Right. So <laughs> unless I'm working counter to my default, you know, I just uh, would, I just ate like I like a normal human being does, and uh, didn't work out. How long did it take you to put twenty on? Like three hours. <laughs> well, how long did you have before you had to put it on? Before you couple shooting? months, couple okay. months. No, he was very. Um, He's actually very uh, uh, respectful. He he calls you, and I didn't have to audition. He said, do you want to do this gig? I said, yes. He said, you have months to prepare for it. I was like, that's because that... It helps. You know, it helps. And it, yeah. it, 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 I, I'm not a guy, because I'm not you know, a movie star, I don't get jobs that far in advance. They're usually like, great, we need you in San Juan, you know... Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday. I'm like, oh, okay. okay. Okay, I better figure out, you know, how cops are in real yeah. life. So, I can... <laughs> so this was one that I actually, uh, I, I, I got to do the very creepy, fun research, which is uh, discover that there is a whole subgenre of stalker thrillers. Um, Misery, Plain Misty for Me, King of Comedy, That's Single right. White Female. Like the list kind of goes on when because I, 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 I put it out there on Twitter. I was like, what are, what are the good stalker movies? And I was like, fuck, there's actually a lot of stalker movies. Clint Eastwood is a radio guy and play Misty for me. Amazing. Yeah. That's a great movie. Oh, amazing. Yeah, Sandra Locke was the stalker, right? Yeah. Or she was, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Wasn't she? I think so. I don't know. I didn't see that one either. Yeah, this is real life. She was in like fucking any which way you can and every which way but loose and fucking a sudden impact. Yeah, yeah she, she was in a sudden impact. Yeah. Sorry to hear. Until he dumped it and she wasn't in his movies anymore. Yep, that was the end of it. They for a long time, yeah. What's that? Yeah, they were a long time uh, couple. Then I guess uh, she stopped fucking Clint. She was sexy, though. She's 70 fucking three? <laughs> well, Clint's not a young man. Holy shit, I didn't know she was that old. How old is Clint? He's in that age range, but I literally had no idea she was. Uh, Clint's in a way in his I 80s. I think he's, yeah. yeah. He might be 90 almost. 85. Oh, he's 87. Oh my yeah. God, he's 87. He, yeah. And didn't, didn't he just direct a movie last year? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, what did he direct? Yeah, I was just trying to think of that, too. It was I, something I, that looked terrible. Jim... Oh, he just directed that train movie with the non-actors, the actual people. Was oh, that that's right. The the France train, the terrorist train, there was some yes. Marines on, and the Marines played themselves. Yes. It looked like a real pile of... Uh, Shit. Not good. Mared. <laughs> you're, not, uh, you're, not, you're not good. 